Hello and welcome back. In this chapter, which is chapter 6 of Klein Organic Chemistry, the third edition, we're going to be introduced to chemical reactivity and mechanisms. So this is the first chapter in involving mechanisms, which is going to be used in every chapter we cover from now on. So we're going to be learning some background information regarding mechanisms and also some background information about how reactions occur and what's the driving force of those reactions. So the driving force of reactions is an uh, entity called uh, free energy, which is represented as a delta G. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But delta G is given by the equation delta H minus T delta S. So delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So what we're going to be doing is looking at each of the terms in this equation independently and how they affect the overall delta G. So again, delta G is the driving force for whether a reaction will occur or not. It's the free energy of the reaction. And the first term that we're going to be discussing is enthalpy. Okay, and so enthalpy is that delta H term. Now you talked about enthalpy a little bit in general chemistry. So you know that enthalpy has to do with re whether a reaction is endothermic, whether it gives off heat, or, with, or whether it, I'm sorry, whether it's endothermic, whether it needs heat taken in, whether it absorbs heat, or whether it's exothermic, whether it gives off heat during a reaction. So enthalpy is the heat exchange between the reaction and its surroundings. Whether it's going to be absorbing heat, then it would be uh, endothermic, or whether it's going to be giving off heat, then it would be exothermic. So why does this occur? Breaking a bond requires the system to absorb energy. So if we form a bond, what's happening is these uh, electrons are actually going together to form a bond. And so the bond is lower energy than the individual electrons. And so we gain something from forming that bond in the form of a lower energy state. So if we break that bond, then we're going to have to put some energy in okay, in order to break the bond. So bonds can be broken homolytically or heterolytically. In other words, we can break a bond where each of the electrons goes back on the atom that it came from. So when a bond is formed, uh, when a bond is formed theoretically, each atom has donated an electron to that bond. There are two electrons in a bond. Okay, so if we can break a bond homolytically, and if so, then each of the electrons goes back to the atom from which it came. And those are called radicals, when the atom has the one electron that it had donated to that bond. When it takes that back, it forms what's called a free radical, because that atom has only one electron now. It has an odd electron. Or we can have heterolytic bond cleavage, which is the most common form of bond cleavage that we're going to see in this book. In fact, we only have one chapter that deals with radicals. Almost all the rest of the reactions that we see are uh, ionic reactions, where we see a heterolytic bond cleavage. So what's happening there? One of the atoms is taking the two electrons that was in that bond with it. Okay and the other atom is losing that bond to form an ionic species. And so one of them gets a lone pair and the other one becomes positively charged. So we're gonna see this over and over and over. This is the most common kind of, head of bond cleavage that we're gonna see, the heterolytic bond cleavage. So the bond dissociation energy, or BDE, like you saw in general chemistry, corresponds to homolytically breaking a bond. So it may not be the way the reaction is really happening. It may not represent the actual mechanism of the reaction, but in order to calculate the enthalpy for a reaction, we use that homolytic bond cleavage, which may be theoretical for that reaction, but it demonstrates how the energy change is occurring, how that heat exchange is occurring, okay? <clears throat> So bond dissociation energy tables are available for most types of bonds, and we can use a similar type of bond in order to determine the bond dissociation energy 
associated with breaking a bond. So for a hydrogen hydrogen bond, for example, it uh, consumes 435 kilojoules per mole. Normally we do these calculations in kilojoules per mole, but they can be done in kcals per mole. But normally we use kilojoules per mole in chemistry for regular calculations. Um, so hydrogen carbon bond for methane is 435. Hydrogen carbon on ethane is 410 and so forth. So you can look up this number in a table or find something as close as you can to it. And what you can do is calculate the enthalpy change for that reaction. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to do that in just a minute. So most reactions involve breaking multiple bonds or for, and forming multiple bonds, okay? So if the reaction is exothermic, then the energy gained by forming the bonds exceeds the energy needed to break the bonds, okay? So and that means that the products are more stable or lower energy than the reactants. If the, react, if the reaction is endothermic, then the energy needed to break the bonds exceeds the stability gained by forming the bonds which means that the products are less stable or higher energy than the reactants, okay? So here's an energy diagram, and we're going to see a lot of these energy diagrams in this course for endothermic versus exothermic reactions. So we have the exothermic reaction on the left. What does that mean? It means that we got some heat out or some energy out in the form of heat when this reaction occurred. It means the products here are at a lower energy than the starting materials. And we can draw a line over from the starting materials showing that energy level and the delta H is the difference in the product versus the reactant energy. So we can see here this reaction is exothermic, okay? The other uh, important features of this graph are that enthalpy is on the y-axis, which is represented by an H, and the reaction coordinate is on the x-axis, which is just labeled reaction coordinate. It means as the reaction proceeds, then we go through these different energy or enthalpy levels, okay, to get to the from starting materials to the products. Now, I often abbreviate this reaction coordinate as P-O-R, which stands for progress of reaction. So we'll see the reaction progress or proceed from the zero mark over to the, toward the right on the x-axis. We And so the other features, so the features that we can see here are that the products are lower energy than the starting materials for an exothermic reaction. Energy is released as heat. In other words, we've got potential energy being converted to kinetic energy. Our chemical energy is the form of potential energy we have here that's being converted to kinetic energy. The delta H is negative, like we've already stated, and the temperature of the surroundings increases. So the surroundings are gaining energy in the form of heat from this reaction. All right, if we move to the graph on the right, also on the y-axis, we have H, we have enthalpy. And on the x-axis, we have reaction coordinate, which we can abbreviate as progress of reaction. So we have some starting materials at some energy level. They're going through that, that progress as the, as the reaction progresses to form products, okay, that are at a different energy level. The products in this case are at a higher energy level, so our reaction is endothermic. It's taking in heat from the surroundings. It's absorbing heat from the surroundings, okay? So we have a positive enthalpy. Our delta H is positive. Our products are higher in energy than our starting materials. Our energy is consumed, in other words, kinetic energy is converted to potential energy. So you may actually have to heat your reaction a little bit uh, to get this to work. Um, and another thing that can happen is you could observe that your, your flask may get cold during the process of this reaction occurring. If you're not heating it, you may observe that. Um, the delta H is positive, okay, so we already stated that. And the temperature of the surroundings uh, so so energy is being absorbed from the surroundings. Heat is being absorbed from the surroundings in an endothermic reaction. 
So the sign plus or minus on delta H indicates if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. The energy diagram is often used to describe the kinetics and thermodynamics of a chemical reaction. Okay, so the energy is on the y-axis and the reaction progress is on the x-axis. So we can do these calculations to determine if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So here's a simple example of how to do that. Um, the delta H is given by this equation, the, the bond dissociation energy for the bonds broken minus the bonds formed, okay? So what bonds are we breaking here in this reaction? We're breaking this carbon hydrogen bond and replacing it with this carbon bromine bond. So we're breaking carbon hydrogen bond and a bromine bromine bond. Okay, we're gonna break that one and we're gonna break this one. And we're gonna form, maybe we should get a different color here. Let's Let's get uh, red, and we're going to form this carbon bromine bond, okay, plus this HBr bond. So we're forming this bond and this bond, and we're breaking this bond and this bond, okay? So it's bonds broken minus bonds formed. So the bonds broken are this carbon hydrogen bond, which is 397 kilojoules per mole, and bromine bromine, which is 193 kilojoules per mole. And again, these numbers came from that chart we just saw a few slides ago. The bonds formed are carbon bromine, which is 285 kilojoules per mole, and HBr, which is 368 kilojoules per mole. So to do this very simple calculation, you just take the bonds broken, which is uh, 397 plus 193. So you're going to add those together because you broke both of those. And then subtract the bonds formed, which is 285 plus 368. Okay, so that gives you negative 63 kilojoules per mole. So this is a negative number, so our reaction is exothermic, so we're going to be giving off heat. So in other words, if we drew a enthalpy versus progress of reaction chart, we'd have our starting materials, okay, going to products, and our products would be at a lower energy level. So we've got a negative delta H, okay? So we can do some calculations with this using the data in table 6.1. Predict the sign and magnitude of delta H for each of the following reactions. In each case, identify whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. Okay, so for A, now I forgot to turn my, um, my screen around, so I'm kind of writing sideways right now. Okay, so what are we breaking? We're breaking this carbon-hydrogen bond. We just did this one. This is the one up here, actually. That's the exact same problem. Okay, so so we've already done A. Okay, so let's do B then. Okay, so let's do B. So we've got the... Um, what are we doing here? Okay, so we're going to replace, let's get a different color. We're going to replace this bond with this bond. So we're breaking this bond and we're forming this bond, okay? So we're breaking a carbon chlorine bond and we're forming a carbon oxygen bond on the alcohol. All right, so we're also going to break one of these hydrogen oxygen bonds. So let's just say that one. Okay, and we're going to form a bond to that chlorine, so we're going to form the HCl. Okay, so we're breaking <clears throat> the eight, the carbon chlorine and the oxygen hydrogen, and we're forming the COH and the HCl bond. Okay, so for B, that's going to be delta H is equal to the summation of bonds broken. That's the bond association energy for the bonds broken minus the summation of the bonds formed. Okay, and so that's equal to 331 plus 498 minus 381 
plus 431, okay, and that's equal to 829 minus 812, which is equal to positive 17. So this is a positive number, and so this is an endothermic reaction, <clears throat> okay? So maybe we'll just do one more of these. I think I'll let you do that last one on your own, okay? So C, um, let's do D. Let's just go ahead and do D. All right, and so what are we breaking? We're breaking this carbon iodine bond, okay? And again, we're breaking the one of the bonds from the oxygen to the hydrogen, okay? And then we're forming this carbon oxygen bond and this HI bond. Okay, so I'll let you do C on your own. And so the, the equation is delta H is equal to the summation of bonds broken minus the summation of bonds formed. Okay, and so that's equal to 209 plus 498, and so what we could do here, we could write these numbers under the, in, under the bonds. So this is 209, we're breaking that one, and 498, so we're breaking that one. Okay, and then the next one, this bond is 381, so you could just look these numbers up, and the HI is 297, okay? So that's minus 381 plus 297, Okay, and that's equal to 707 minus 678, which is equal to positive 29 kilojoules per mole. So again, we have an endothermic reaction. Now, if we do, drew a diagram, what would this look like? Our enthalpy versus progress of reaction. Our starting materials are going to be at a lower energy than our products. So we're going to have an increase in that energy level making our delta H is positive, okay? Alright, so in the next video we'll be discussing entropy and and then we're going to uh, move on to the discussion of uh, free energy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.